Hello! In this video, I'm going to compare this brand new 2022 Talaria Sting against this brand new 2022 Suron X Black Edition. In order to maintain objectivity in this comparison, I will utilize a point-based system by allotting one point to the bike with a better feature compared to the other. At the end of this video, the bike with the most points has the most points. Let's check it out. Yeah. Let's get right into it. You'll see the point counters in the bottom corners. So stepping back and looking at the aesthetics, I think these are both beautiful bikes, but I have to give the aesthetics point to the Suron. I think it looks better. However, form is not more important than function. So how about the ergonomics of these bikes? For the ergonomics point, I have to go for Talaria. Although I don't think it looks good, this battery cover is great for hugging with your legs and you can scooch up further when you're racing, making those turns. Let's do a quick throttle comparison. All right, throttle point definitely goes to the Suron, much smoother throttle. Looking at the grips, I'm going to give the grips point to the Talaria, much grippier grips. The Talaria is also going to take the point for the display. It's got this beautiful egg rider display with much more control than you can have on the Suron display. Quick horn test. Hmm. Uh, I think the Talaria sounds better. Another point for the Talaria. Now looking at the brakes, right out of the box on both of these bikes, they're the same, no points allotted. Same with the handlebars, pretty much the same handlebars. Looking at the front forks on these bikes, we've got the RST Kella on the Talaria and the Suron KKT inverted forks on the Suron. I think these forks look better, but sometimes you get these forks on the Suron, you'll get these forks on the Talaria. No points will be allotted for front forks because it depends on what bike you get your hands on. We're looking at the same front wheel, same front tire, same front rotor, same front brakes, no points will be allotted in the front. We're also looking at the same headlight, no points for the headlight. Key ignition is the same. Headset spacer on the top for the Suron and the bottom for the Talaria. I don't know if there's a difference there. Now as far as turning on the bike for the Suron, you, you turn the key, it's on, ready to go. You got your Sport Nico switch. Compared to the Talaria, you turn the key and you have to press the start button. I'm not a fan of that feature. I'm giving one point to the Suron because it's faster to turn on and get riding. Moving back to the batteries, the Talaria is going to take a lot of points. I'm going to give it one point for its higher capacity than the Suron, and another point for the fact that it's got a two-in-one plug as opposed to the two plugs that you see on the Suron. If you're doing that every day, it is so nice to have the Talaria plug. I'll also give the Talaria battery one more point. I'm sorry, Suron, because it's got a really nice charging port and a really nice handle. Those both make a difference when you're using this bike every single day. So that's three points for the Talaria battery. In the battery compartment, I'm going to give one more point to the Talaria because of this awesome locking mechanism that holds the battery in. I think both bikes need this. The Talaria has it, so it takes the point. However, the battery cover, although it's not as ergonomic, I genuinely think the battery cover on this Talaria ruins the aesthetics. That's why I gave the aesthetic point to the Suron. So when we're looking at the battery cover as well, I'm giving one point to the Suron because it just looks so much better. Now, I don't feel comfortable comparing the motors just because I don't know that much about them. They look about the same size. They go about the same speed. I'm not going to give any points for the motors. However, the Talaria is going to take another point moving back from the motor, looking at that gearbox. This gearbox is supposed to fix all the issues that we've had with that primary belt drive, especially for the off-roaders. It's a fully enclosed gearbox for that primary drivetrain. You're not going to get any rocks or dirt in there. On paper, this gearbox solves those issues. However, this bike has not gone through nearly the amount of testing that the Suron has. So even though we've seen issues with that primary belt drive, we haven't had enough testing on this bike to see if there's issues with the gearbox. So although I'm giving it one point, it is a cautionary point. Cautionary because it hasn't had the testing and because it has oil in there and you don't know, maybe you dump the bike, now it's leaking oil, you gotta change it out. It honestly sounds worse than just changing the belt. So I'm giving them a point, but it's cautionary. Now one point that I'm going to give the Talaria that I'm very confident about is the rear swing arm. It's considerably wider than the Suron rear swing arm which allows you to put fatter tires and wheels on the back for better grip. In fact the Talaria actually comes out of the box with a slightly wider 1.6 wheel compared to the Suron 1.4 wheel. Now getting into the nitty gritty, I have to give the Talaria another point for the design on this main jack shaft bolt. You can just use a standard Allen key instead of this like weird custom key you need to use for the Suron. I've seen people use a Phillips head and a hammer, but definitely one point for the Talaria on that design. 
I'll have to give another point to the Tolaria on the rear tail light. It looks just a little bit brighter and a little bit better than the Sauron. And it's got these bar ends right out of the box. You're gonna dump the bike. You're gonna tear your grips. It's nice to have the bar ends. Sauron, buddy, you're lacking on the points right now. We've got pretty much the same rear sprocket, same chain, same rear rotor, same rear mud guard and chain guard on both of these bikes. There will be no points allotted for that. For rear shocks, we've got a Suron rear shock on the Suron and a Fast Ace DBA 53RC shock on the Talaria. That shock's a little bit longer, looks a little bit beefier. I'm going to give another point to the Talaria. Coming down to the bash guards, these both have nice vents for the air. It looks like the Suron has a couple more air vents, but I know as a fact the Suron has a pretty weak bash guard out of the box. I'm not sure about the Talaria, so I'm not going to give a point for the bash guard to either bike. The rear linkage design on both of these bikes is very different, but I do not have the background to tell you which one's better. You should know they're different, however I'm not going to give a point to either bike because it's not clear which one's better, it's just a different design. I gotta say, I know the Suron's really falling behind point wise, but let's also talk about price. Here at Bike Craze in Anaheim, California, you can pick up a 2022 Suron X Black Edition for $4,400 fully built, or you can buy a brand new 2022 Talaria Sting fully built for $4,800. That difference in price isn't huge, but it is enough to give the Suron one more point for being the more affordable bike. But first, let's do two quick measurements. Out of the box with the bike standing upright, the lowest point on the Suron seat is 33 inches. On the Talaria, the lowest point on the seat standing upright out of the box is 35 inches. Now, I can't give points for the seat height because it depends on how tall you are, but the Talari does have a higher seat by about two inches. It's noticeable just looking at the bikes, the Talaria has higher ground clearance. That's one point for the Talaria. And just while we're out here measuring stuff, the width of the body of the bike is seven and a half on the Talaria and about six and a half on the Suron, so a little wider on the Talaria. Widest point on the Talaria seat is about six and a half inches. Widest point on the Suron seat is about the same. Final measurement on the swing arm, Suron swing arm looking at five and three quarter inches versus the Talaria swing arm we're looking at six and a quarter inches. That's enough talking, let's go ahead and rip these bikes and see how they ride. Let's take the Talaria out first, turn the key, takes a second. See that's why that alone is why I gave the Suron a point because it takes like two seconds for this to turn on and you have to press start. Now it's ready to go. You've got eco and sport mode which you can change with the mode button right there. I'm gonna start in sport mode. Oh my God, it is so snappy. And you've got four regen levels. So you can really feel the difference. Like I'm in regen four and look, it, it, it takes me almost to a full stop. So I'm gonna give one point to the Talaria because it has adjustable regen on the go. So my biggest complaint with the Talaria is how snappy the throttle is. It's very, very snappy when you're going slow. But then once you're past like 15 miles an hour, it's got no snap. Whereas the Suron, it's snappy on the bottom, but it maintains that snap uh, in, in slightly higher speeds. Now, unfortunately, I don't have anyone here to race directly, so I'm gonna race myself. I'm going to go from this stop sign to that 35 mile per hour sign, and then put it side by side with the Suron. All right, three, two, one, full throttle. So that's the little race with the Suron. I wonder who won. But just going back to that uh, ergonomics point I was talking about at the very beginning, look how my legs can hug this bike and how I can scooch up onto the battery. I call it balls to battery. I'm also on the street, so unfortunately I can't be testing this in the dirt. Here's a little, here's a little grass action for us. Very, very cushy suspension. Okay, here we go with the wheelie test. Oh, oh my God, I don't like that. I don't think this bike wheelies well because of that throttle curve I was talking about. So I'm going to give one point to the Suron for that wheelie ability. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Time to ride the 2022 Suron X Black Edition. Ready to go. In eco mode right now. It's louder than the Talaria, and I like that. Some people don't, 
so no points will be allotted for that, but the Sauron is a little bit louder. Pop it into sport. I hit some grass. Suspension feels just as nice and squishy as the Talaria. Ah, much more pleasant to wheelie. Much more pleasant to wheelie. It is so much more enjoyable to ride than the Talaria as far as the throttle curve. If I haven't already given a point for the throttle curve, that is going to the Suron right now. It maintains your torque at higher levels without using all the torque right off the line. Woo! It's just a little bit thinner. Feels a little bit more nimble than the Talaria. Here we go, full throttle on the 2022 Suron X Black Edition. 45, 47. 47 miles an hour. God, that is dripping fluid. Don't let the fact that the Suron has fewer points than the Talaria dissuade you from getting a Suron. I personally prefer the Suron. The Talaria has a lot of improvements compared to the Suron, but I prefer the Suron. The aftermarket industry is saturated with Suron parts right now. So I'm giving one point to the Suron for upgradability. Included in that point is the fact that this battery cover can be lifted in a much more organic way than you would with the Talaria battery lid if you were to upgrade the Talaria battery. The Suron also feels lighter. It's got that throttle curve that I prefer and it's more affordable. For those reasons, I prefer the Suron. However, on paper, point wise, it looks like the Talaria wins. If you're willing to pay the extra $400, that's the key. But until they have 72 volt Talarias, it's Suron for me. If you are local in Anaheim, California, go ahead and hit up Bike Craze. They carry both of these bikes. As always, thank you so much for watching. And stay tuned. Yeah.